So this will just be a quick overview of some of the things you might want to do when you're performing your linear regression. And these will be applicable to the other kinds of regressions we do later in the semester. I've already typed in some data that came out of a problem from the textbook. The left column is the length of the femur in the human body. And the right column is the height of the body that it belongs to. We'd like to make a scatter plot with the horizontal axis as the femur length and the vertical axis as the height. That is, we're trying to express the height of the person as a function of the length of their femur. So we can, I've already got the data here, and I can come up here to insert. And I want to choose a scatter chart right here. I'll insert just the standard scatter plot. You notice it's already picked up my data. You can see the data plotted here, and, and it's highlighted here that that's the data that's been selected. If for some reason the data is not automatically imported, you can right click in the center of the chart and go to select data. And then we want to highlight all this data. So I'll click on this, and I'm holding down shift and using the arrow keys to build this rectangle that collects all the data that I want. I'll hit OK. And now we have our chart. So the next thing to do here is add a trend line. And if we click on the data points themselves, you see the data points have become highlighted. And I can right click on those and I can add a trend line to this data. This particular data looks like a linear function will fit it well. So we'll leave this checked here at linear. And then if I scroll down at some of my other options here, I'd like to forecast forward a little bit. The forecasting lets us extend the trend line beyond the data that we actually have available. I'll extend the trend line forward 5 centimeters and backward 5 centimeters. We'd also like to go ahead and display the equation on the chart and display the r-squared value on the chart, the correlation coefficient. You see that Excel has chosen a much bigger domain and range than I really need. If I click here on the horizontal axis, I get several different options available to me on the right. And I want to choose the data bar and then the axis options. And then I can specify the minimum and maximum values. So it looks like a minimum for the x-axis, maybe of about 30. We can try that. And then a maximum somewhere, let's say 55. We can do the same thing for the, the vertical axis. So this really focuses better on the line than the original. The last thing you might want to do is change the labels. You might also want to add labels to the horizontal and vertical axis. And if you come here to the plus sign, you have several options for things you might add. Uh, we'd like to add axis titles. And choose clicking that box adds a title to both axes. Finally, we might drag the equation and correlation coefficient somewhere better, and then put the chart in place.